morning everyone it's saturday morning uh just barring up the 272 uh, i got my new aftermarket recoil we're gonna give this a go uh hasn't broken yet i find this kind of stuff it usually breaks on the first pull or it lasts <laughs> it's one or the other uh whatever it was like 15 bucks or something so i uh i'll run aftermarket parts and try them a lot of times they work fine sometimes they're garbage you put them on the saw and it's like bang it is what it is um i'll probably be packing this spare one in my chainsaw kit um yeah i'm just gonna go over to my neighbors and uh, put some more time on this i think we'll turn it up a bit today uh just wanted to discuss um break-ins um when you build a saw what what kind of break-in should you do that's an opinion um you know what they say about opinions <laughs> so i'm just gonna say how i do it if you do it different i'm good with that um i break in my saw is really rich um and you'll see that uh, next video I'm going to post is of this saw running rich. Okay. It's running at 12 to 12.5, which is like a thousand RPM under stock max RPM. Um, some people would say, why do you do that? Well, when you've, this saw I got out of the trunk of a car. Okay. Uh, like literally it was in a box in a trunk of a car. God knows how long I've been sitting there. Um, it was filthy. The bottom end was seized, like the bearings. So it's like I scrubbed the saw and went through it. New bearings, new seals, gaskets, fuel line, carb kit, top end's been rebuilt, porting, muffler mod. Okay. Um, to me, if I'm going to blow up a saw, it's going to do it in the first few tanks. Okay. Um... I want to take it easy on that saw and let everything bed in. Let the bearings, let the bearings get going. Let the top end break in. Um, I've seen it and I've done it. Um, if you turn a saw up too soon, you can scrub that top end pretty quick in a saw that's otherwise fine. Um, you need to let the the ring seat and all that kind of stuff. So you you really you're seating the rings. So. Uh, in my opinion, lubricating the top end and getting more fuel to the to the saw is just a better deal. Um, that's why you'll see in my first cuts, my saws are always rich. I'm not trying to show what they can do, and usually they do pretty good at a low RPM, which is awesome. If they run good at a low RPM, I mean, you figure this saw is probably going to run... 13.5 stock with the work I've done to it, it's probably going to run in the mid 14s, you know. Um, if I want to turn it up, I can run this thing at 13.5 all day, which is what I'll do a lot of the time. But, um, you know, in that video, it's 12.5. That's where I tacked it at. I usually don't even use a tack, I just listened. Um, usually, my ear and the tack are within a few hundred RPM of each other because I've never had a tack. I just bought one recently. And the only reason why I bought a tack, um, my 266 XP, one that's up there, it's ported. Um, I thought I had an air leak. I was, I have a hard time hearing idling speed. I thought I had an air leak. The chain was going well. It turns out I had a bad clutch spring. Well, the only way to really diagnose that was to put a tack on it and and diagnose where the chain is engaging that saw ported wants to idle around 3000 okay that's the sweet spot if you turn it down to 27 26 it likes to load up a little bit so that clutch i think should engage at 3500 rpm well it's engaging at like 3000 3100 so when i get it to where it idles nice the chain wants to spin so is what it is right so i'm gonna have to rebuild the clutch on that it runs fine but if you put the chain brake on and throw it on the ground and let it idle it'll load up sometimes because the chain wants to or the clutch wants to engage if that makes sense it'll stall right so anyhow that's why 
Um, I love the old saws, you know, but for porting and just having a more reliable, usable work saw, I like the newer 200 series because they have a newer style clutch. They have three clutch springs instead of one, you know, the old style. Nothing wrong with those old style clutches, but when you get those saws, the springs tend to be worn out. Now, there are ways to to uh, modify the spring to make it engage at a higher RPM. You can cut a few links off. You can put a new spring in there. But the problem is, sometimes getting those springs in without stretching them can be a little bit of a hassle. So, um, those saws are a little more finicky to tune, you know, because they the, the springs kind of have their own idea of what they want to do. So... That's why this saw idles perfect. Really didn't have any problems tuning this one. Whereas my 266, I was farting around with that. You can see in the video where I'm running it at the wood pile, I'm constantly turning the screwdriver because I knew I had a clutch issue. So, you know, and as the carb gets warm because of the the block, uh, the tuning's going to change. That's just that's the nature of these old saws. Uh, when you run one of these, carry a screwdriver in your pocket because it will need a little tweak here and there. Doesn't bother me. Um, older stuff needs more love. Uh, for me, that's more enjoyable. Um, that's why you, if you take a 300 series, you know, an original edition 372 with the intake boot and a Walboro carb. Those things run perfect all the time. You rarely have to turn the screwdriver on one of those. Unless you're, you know, dealing with elevation or extreme shifts in temperature. So, anyways, I'm going to go give this thing another run. Um, I'm probably going to post that video of me breaking it in. That saw is rich. You can hear it on the upstroke. It's snarling. I probably had it a little, little rich, but it was really, really hot out that day. Uh, high 80s. You know, uh, very humid. I just, I try to take it easy on my saws when I build them. Because you know what? Yeah, I can blow it up and fix it, but it's like, that's a waste of time. And when you've already spent, you know, you can put a lot of hours into these old saws when you're porting them and building them, you know. Because you never know. It, it might need this, it might need that. Um, put a lot of love into these saws, and it, it's a shame. If you have a major failure, that saw can be good for the garbage. So, anyhow... Just, uh, just doing my rakers here, and uh, I guess I'll throw an extra bar and chain in the van, and uh, I'm going to go give this thing another go. Anyhow, uh, got a bunch of new subscribers this week. I don't know what's going on. Appreciate it. Welcome to everybody that's new. Uh, please post comments, questions. My channel's small, so, you know, uh, it's pretty easy for me to answer comments, which I like, you know. Um, so yeah, if you got a question or you see something in one of my builds, please ask, uh, what I know you can know, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to hoard information. This channel is all about teaching you guys that you can do this. If I can do this, you can do it. Um, building saws is trial and error, but after you do enough saws, you're going to be able to know your way around, you know, buy a blown up saw and dig into it. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take it easy.